Thank you. Heavenly Father, we know that in spite of this tragedy that we experienced here in the Ottawa Valley this past week, that you are in control. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the God who loves us. And Heavenly Father, as we go into this football game tonight, I just pray for safety on behalf of both teams. I pray, Heavenly Father, that there will be a hard-fought game that will be honoring and glorifying to your kingdom. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give the coaches wisdom as they send in the plays. And I pray, pray for the players also, Lord, that you would give them the keen eyes and the keen minds and that they would play every play to bring honor and glory to your kingdom. And I pray this in the precious and wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for his sake. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for our national anthem. Hi everyone, Ronnie Wald, live and direct here I am at Lancaster High School for a neutral site ball game. We're so proud you're with us on this, the first season of these historic L28 sports broadcasts. Tonight, as I said, neutral site, 
We're going to bring you a Thursday night game. It's going to be, of course, Desert Christian, the home squad, taking on a Los Angeles entry, Milken High School. So we're going to pan back to the field right now to find out who wins the opening flip. I do want to make one more proviso. This is eight-man football. Oh, it's raucous and wild, and we're looking for an exciting game. Anything can happen in the eight-man game. In fact, the scores can really, again, bust through the roof. So we'll have all that coming to you right now, again, on L28. So glad you're with us. school as we noted located in LA in fact LA is a big place to be exact they're near the Sepulveda Pass the I-405 if you know about a skirball center that's where that high school is located and because both schools Desert Christian and Milken are of the smaller variety they play the eight-man game and so what we have and we might be able to get Annabelle, our talented camera person, to get a shot of the field. It's only 80 yards long, that's right. And then also, it's a tighter configuration when you talk about the width of the field. Desert Christian, the Lancaster entry, adorned in a good looking black top, blue pant, and a black helmet. As for Milken, it looks like a complete white number, but the pants are blue. Just checking things out in terms of the Heritage League, and by the way, when you talk about Desert Christian, they're very excited about this ball game. It's the league opener for them. The Wildcats of Milken have played two league games, and they've come up not an empty zilch, 0-2. Desert Christian, however, 1-2 overall, the only win against Trona. After that, they've had some problems, including a 45-0 loss last week to Hesperia Christian. But some people do understand the uh, disparity in that score. Hesperia Christian won the Division II Southern Section Championship last year. Lights are on here at Lancaster. They call it affectionately the Eagle's Nest. And by the way, we'll be back here next week as well. Our second broadcast. We're so very excited. And of course, watching L28, the maturation of the channel it will always provide the local features the news but now you've got live play-by-play -play right here in the antelope valley and here we are with the ball placed at their own 40 and here's the kick and we are off and running taking it the milken player way back there in fact it's going to be in the end zone and they're going to bring it back out it'll be a touchback Again, if you're thinking of the traditional red zone on this field, 10 yards and then another 10 yards to get to the goalpost, forget it. They brought in this 100-yard field in 10 yards on both sides. But head coach of Desert Christian, very talented man, and of course we're so grateful for his new friendship, Aaron Williams. He told us, don't get this confused with arena football. It has nothing to do with that. So here comes Milken, and we'll find out. They do share quarterbacks. We'll see who's going to be piloting the team right now from a shotgun, pitch back to the ball carrier, take it on the right side, a gain of three, and then they maul him all over the top of the particular rusher, and that was Noah Bakewell. Or check that, I'm sorry, Milken's own Logan Dinser. Oh, by the way, we brought up Noah Bakewell. That was on my mind. He is the son of John Sanders, who's an employee from the city of Lancaster. So I wanted to get that in, but he definitely plays for Desert Christian. No score, just starting things out. One more thing in the eight-man game. They do retain the same time periods, 12-minute quarters. And now the officials call it off. Looks like number seven out there for Milken. So that's Gavin Vogel. Interesting thing about Gavin, this is his first time he's ever suited up for football. And because he's such a great athlete, he's seen a lot of playing time along with Etai Bitten. Those two guys interchange as quarterbacks for this Milken team. Again, they're known as the Wildcats, 
and the nom de plume, the sobriquet for Desert Christian, the Knights. Knights and Wildcats going at it tonight on a blustery evening in the Antelope Valley. Here's the handoff, looking for space, now cuts back, holding on to the football, and finally brought down, and maybe a gain of one, if that, for again, number one, and his name is Akiva Mose. The last name is spelled M-O-S-S-E, but phonetically Mose, S-A-Y, and he's been told to me by very credible people in the, again, Heritage League, that he is simply a game breaker. So we'll keep our eye on him, the 5'11", 148 pound senior for the Wildcats of Milken. 10.34 to go here in the first. Vogel barks out signals, man in motion, that's Mose. He dumps it off to Mose and they crowd him and then finally he breaks away and because of his own great ability to elude the defender, he was able to get and make yardage on his own, maybe that time a gain of five. So the idea with the eight-man game, maybe a more crowded field, less inclined to score, that's not true. In the eight-man game, many players have dual roles, and if they miss an assignment and miss a player, that guy is off to the races invariably have a chance to get a big score. And the numbers are extremely high. Milliken, even though they're, again, 0-2 in the league, they do churn up a lot of, I would say, total yardages. Now there is a flag on the field, and it's going to be called the penalty against Milken, and they're going to push the football back, it looks like, around the 8-yard line, possibly the 6. Let's see. Finally, the six. And even though they're working right now from that far hash mark, there's only a few yards between that and the sideline. It's really tight around there, like, well, going down an alley or something. Man in motion. And here it is. Quick throw on the flat. He's got the football. He bobbled it and then held on to it. He did pick up some yardage that time again, most say. His numbers have just been spectacular, really have been. Do you know he's got 609 all-purpose yards? Quite impressive. The other metaphor for this Milken player, he's been called truly explosive. All right, we're at fourth, and it shows 18. And, oh, we're happy to say from last week the scoreboard is fully operative. The punting unit on the field and a very good kick. And it comes down quickly to the return specialist. He's got it past midfield and knocked out of bounds that time. Number five with it, Steven Weiser with a good return. And great, again, field position right now for this Wildcat team. Or check that, 19. Desert Christian, what a storied legendary history they've got. It all started with a kindergarten in 1977 when they started the scholastic realm of the former First Baptist Church in Lancaster. 1988, they started their high school. And here they are today, competing in the CIF Southern Section. 9.09 to go here in the first, no score. First sequence. Audible called at the line of scrimmage, in fact, takes it himself. Here's the throw, a high angular throw, and it's going to be pass interference. So it was Francisco Balcorta, whose dad, Francisco Sr., is an assistant coach on this team. And he showed his arm strength, but apparently, again, Pass interference because the flag came down to near the, where the receiver was with the ball wound up. And as a result, it's always 15 yards. Unlike the pros or NC2A, where it's automatic first down and where it took place, and the high school realm, the pass interference is 15 yards. First and 10, and right now, 
at the Milken 28-yard line. Handoff, an opening on the right side. A nice big game, not quite enough for the first down, a gain of eight that time, but outstanding run on the part of Noah Bakewell. And his dad, the employee with the city of Lancaster, also very proud of Noah. Coming into this ball game, 18 for 129 yards, 4.6 a carry. That time he doubled it with about a gain of, it's going to show up on the scoreboard, a gain of six. So second and four. And here's the give. It's on the left side. Eludes one, straight arms, and works his way to the five-yard line. Number 23 on the carry, Raymond Lattimore. So thanks to that carry, first down appropriately enough, and Desert Christian looking and hoping to break the ice and get the first score in this ball game. Here we go with the quarterback keeper, and he eludes one, and then a stutter step into the end zone for a touchdown. Francisco Balcorda, 5'10", 150 pounder, and Balcorda, the junior, able to score on his own and break the ice, as we noted, and get themselves the 6 nothing lead. Rarely you will find at this level a kicking game coming in for the point after touchdown in the eight-man game. Usually they go for the two-point conversion. Not true this time. Even with the wind going on right now, and it's a blustery wind, National Weather Service told us it would be somewhere about 18 to 20 miles an hour in a southwesterly direction. That won't affect the field goal specialist here, and the kick is up and it's good. No, he missed it. Missed to the right. So from our angle, it looked like he made it, but no way. And as a result, it's going to remain 6-0. 7.30 to go here in the first quarter. Desert Christian with the opening score. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Six nothing. Desert Christian scoring a moment ago on a quarterback keeper. And this is kicked out of the end zone. So right there, a touch back. And Desert Christian, two and one versus Milken. Again, the mistake can be made. Milliken High School, Long Beach, no. M-I-L-K-E-N, Milken High School. And again, a two and one mark in the last three years. And now a procedure call against, and finally the umpires and the official's designation. But nonetheless, they say it's on the defense. Ball placed, and now a nice big gain this time for the white-clad squad. Again, the Wildcats. That's enough for a first down. Number 12, the ball carrier that time. That was Braden Monkowitz. 
They uh, truly play in the Liberty League, this Milken team, except Liberty League does not host football. So for the only sport they participate in the Heritage, that being, of course, Milken, that being tackle football. They've already been up to Lancaster a couple times. Now here is a pitch out, taking the football, holding on to it, and dragged down violently that time. Well, still a gain of five. Check that, possibly four, that time for the ball carrier for Milken. There's a few hardy souls that have made it out from L.A. to be here cheering on their Milken team. If you're not, we're so glad you're with us here on L28. Ronnie Wald on a broadcast solo bit. And the National Weather Service told us temperatures will dip down in the 60s. And that pervasive, again, hard driving wind, part of the action tonight. Handoff and being brought down, remained on his feet. Then they took a couple more players that time, blue clad knights to bring down the ball carrier, number 10, Connor Klein. Of all the exceptional athletes on the Milken team, one thing that was told to us by Aaron Williams, the talented coach at Desert Christian. Keep your eye out for the talented, again, Connor, because he is something else. Klein's the last name. First team all league player. He plays with passion and experience. Instead, the quarterback uh, dumps it off on a screen. It is caught. It's a bit short of the first down, but a good grab that time. And again, as we noted, the player with passion, one Connor Klein on the on the grab. Strong, heavy winds, and again, Coach Williams said, you know, maybe that pervasive, strong wind will work to our favor in this ball game and against Milken. That's what he told me. He said it was the good old Antelope Valley wind gust might end up helping Desert Christian. Behind the line of scrimmage, brought down Connor Klein in there on the stop. Desert Christian, number 23 that time, and boy, what a stop it was. Raymond Lattimore, 5'6", 150, but plays with the heart of the lion and was able to come through in a big way. As we noted, 6 nothing. a moment ago, a quarterback keeper on the part of Vogel to sneak into the end zone and get the score and get this game going. 442 remaining here in the first quarter. Six nothing Desert Christian, and they've got the football right now. The fans, yeah, they're all bundled up, no doubt about it. The players, a lot of them are sleeveless out there. They're creating their own kinetic energy. Here's the throw deflected, and it'll be incomplete. In there quickly to deflect the pass was an interior lineman that time on the part of Milken. Great job just to get the hands up that time. And so as a result, second and 10. Hey, we want to say hello to Jennifer Seguin, she's up there in the state capital of California, Sacramento. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Jennifer, it's just not the same without you. But, but we'll, we'll press on from a shotgun. Here's the give, up the middle, nice big breakaway. All the way to the 30-yard line. I suspect that'll bring up a third and three. Great speed that time. When you have the opening, you got to, again, floor it. Step on the gas. Make it happen. And they did that time. Elliot Turner in his eighth year with Milken and Aaron Williams. Boy, he gave us a lot of good information on his team. The loquacious Aaron Williams in his seventh year at the helm of the Knights. 3.55 remaining, 6 nothing. Another big pickup. It's wide open. He may be off to the races, but one man to beat, and that man caught up to him. Oh! 
tremendous game Noah Bakewell by catching him from behind with Hayden Ramirez. Or check that. Number 20, Theo Fleischman. Theo is noted as one of the great athletes on the team. So great job. Or he would have no doubt scored. No doubt about it. It's an exciting brand of football, and they're playing it tonight. Handoff, 41's got it. Right into a pack of Milken players and being stopped immediately that time. Noah Bakewell did pick up four or five, and they're very close right now. It'll be second and goal to go. 2.58 on this, the first quarter clock. Six nothing Desert Christian and looking for more. The quarterback at the helm, Francisco Alcorda. He's got it right now. And the handoff works his way and finally dropped down. Dropped down very hard. Tried to open up, tried to follow blockers. He didn't have far to go, but that time it looked like he lost a yard or two. I want to give credit where credit's due. Balcorda, the one that was able to score earlier on that quarterback keeper. So my bad that time. And as we said, Francisco Jr., father, one of the talented assistant coaches, again, on this once more Desert Christian team. Third down, goal to go. Will he hold on to it? He did before. No, he elects to throw it over the heads of everyone. It's incomplete. He leapt into the air. He had some bodies coming at him and arms high in the air. And he uh, went up the ladder, a vertical leap, but it didn't work. And right now we're at fourth and, again, goal to go. They post one on the scoreboard. Let's see how they're going to play it. We were told the eight-man game don't see a lot of kicking. Well, we might see a field goal attempt right here. Let's see what they do. No, they're going to go for it. So tension time here in Lancaster. Fourth down play, an heroic effort. Is he going to hold on to it? No, the ball carrier's got it. The sweep, he's in for the score. Number 42 again. Noah Bakewell, and he's got himself a score of his own, and as a result, you've got yourself six more points on the scoreboard, and it is 12 nothing. See how they're gonna handle it right now. If the kicking unit's gonna come out, looks like it is. So they missed that first point after touchdown, that conversion, and now they have an opportunity right here. You'd think they'd go for the two and try to make up for both, but no, instead, Linus said, here's the kick, and it's no good. Now you find out why kicking is not prized at the eight-man level. Misses two extra points. Nonetheless, Desert Christian with the 12-0 lead with 129 remaining in the first will be right back.
Back to live action, everybody. 12 nothing Desert Christian, and another kickoff that ends up being a touchback in this shortened field. And let's see what Milken can do. A powerhouse team, an offensive juggernaut, but so far they've been shut out in this early stages of the ballgame in the waning moments of the first quarter. From a shotgun and from their own 20. Decides to air it out, a bomb, an open receiver might be interference, but they say no. So as a result, they're gonna bring it back, it's incomplete. So they go for the, again, whole shooting match that time. The official is making some type of gesture to his colleague, but they are going back. There is an infraction. It's being called on Milken. So our eyes and our complete attention was on what was going on with the pass play. And as a result, Milken it would not have counted even if the catch was made. And they're pushed back all the way to their 10 yard line. A quick throw, right side, down out pattern, taking it, working hard, and getting the first down. He did it completely on effort that time. The well known Akiva Mose. Their first down, their second of the ball game. 125, 124, 123 to go here in the first. 12 nothing Desert Christian. Quarterback looking around, surveying the situation. And here's the snap. Another one, he wants to show off that arm a little bit ahead of the intended receiver. He does a little bit of everything. That was Akiva. Couldn't quite catch up to it, and that will be incomplete. As we said, Akiva, the 609 all-purpose yards. So he truly is an important cog in the machine for this Milken squad. Over 1,000 eight-man teams in America, and the most, naturally, California, 108 of them, and two of them on display right now here at LHS. Inside one minute to go. Pitch out, right side. No blockers to follow, he'll have to do it by himself, and works up to, it looks like, the 45. Number 28. Boy, he took a bruising hit that time. Joshua Kaduri for Milken. Both teams coming off disappointing losses last week. In terms of Desert Christian, they were shut out. And Milken didn't have much success last week as well, so. Again, both of them want to right the ship, so to speak. 16 seconds to go, clock running, play action. Now steps out, and now a heave, a long throw. He went high to get it, he made the remarkable catch. One more time, we're looking at, again, the great physicality of Mose, and up against two defenders. And we got ourselves one second to go here on the first quarter clock. Big first down and puts them deep into desert Christian territory and they're gonna let it run out. And so they'll be going the other way. And with a golden opportunity right now for Milken and they need it because they're down 12 nothing to desert Christian. We'll be right back. You're watching, of course, sports broadcast on L28.
Welcome back, everyone, as we swing into the second quarter of play. Again, so glad you're with us. Ronnie Wald, your game broadcaster. It's Milken making the long sojourn off from L.A., playing the Lancaster entry, Desert Christian. And we're talking about the history of Desert Christian. The high school started in 1988. And their talented athletic director, Rachel Edwards, her son plays for this team. He's number 99. He's a senior. 6'1", a 205-pounder. Eats out the Edwards house and home. And anyway, we want to thank Rachel Edwards and the kindness of the athletic department, again, at Desert Christian. They came up on our second week lottery, and we're so glad we are able to cover their, again, tremendous athletic program. Here's the throw. It's a down-out pattern, and it's going to be right through the buttery fingers that time of Akiva Mose. I mean, he was another opportunity, and we see it in the pro realm as well. We talked about it last week, a player not making the grab first and then turning to run. Mose thought he had it, and he's made that step towards, again, the promised land, the goal line, and he turned out himself, letting it slip through his fingers. So, incomplete. 11.35 to go in the second. Quarterback stepping back. Number seven, Gavin Bogle. And he's really been airing it out in the last few sequences. This one's incomplete. The two quarterbacks they use, again, we talked about Etai Bitten. He's been around three years. But again, number seven, Gavin Bogle, the 6'1 senior. It's the first time he's suited up for football. One thing, you can have a great live arm, as he just showed right there, but one thing you must develop in the high school realm, so to speak, is that touch. Right now, second and 10. Annabelle, our talented camera person, she's bundling up. She's got the hoodie on. She knows what to do. We're so proud of our L28 staff, and there's an army of them here to help us tonight. But I don't see them right now. It's Annabelle and me. That's it. Here's the throw between coverages. Makes the grab. And that may be enough for the first down. Milken obviously does not want this game to slip away. Boy, I got some great, great quotes from Aaron Williams. He says, our defense needs to make Vogel throw off his back feet. And he did that time. We need to be physical. And as I noted earlier, we need that good old Antelope Valley win to work in our favor. However, here's the call against Milken. And again, after they gained all that territory, it's so defeating and depressing to walk it back, but not if you're a Desert Christian fan. Now they're going all the way back on a big 10-yard penalty to their, the 40-yard line of Desert Christian. Vogel from a shotgun, 12 nothing. Desert Christian, steps back, he has time, the throw on the left side is a bit short that time. Mose had to go down to where the grass is and could not make the play. Now we're at a fourth and 20. So with the ball spotted now at the Desert Christian 40, Hunting unit will make its way onto the field. With the wind behind him, let's see if this does help the trajectory and distance of this kick. No, they're going to play it. They're going to go for it. Wow, here's Vogel. 
Here he goes, a long throw, deflected, and there's a flag over there. Maybe that's what they were hoping for. Lay it out there, a long throw, Hail Mary of sorts, and maybe get the penalty out of it. But right now, Milken player is down. Hope he's all right. It looks like Moussa. So they go for it on fourth and 20 with the expectation that if they didn't go anywhere and it ended up incomplete, the ball would be spotted at Desert Christian's own 40. That was the idea. Very courageous on the part of Milken to even go for it. Nonetheless, they're going to help Mose off the field. He is walking on his own volition right now. So that's good news at least. But as far as Milken goes, he is the straw that stirs the Milken drink. He makes it happen. They desperately need him. The Heritage League opener. By the way, no Heritage League game next week for Desert Christian. They're going to go up to 395 to Lone Pine. Wow. Can we do that game? I'm looking around at the staffers of L28. We'll all crowd into one Uber. I'll jump out first. It'll stick you with the bill. <laughs> Lone Pine, that sounds exciting. All right. Fourth and 20, they say on the scoreboard. I don't think so. Anyway, quick throw on the right side, incomplete. 10.52 remaining here in the first half. We were talking about Rachel Edwards, the talented athletic director of Desert Christian, and we have a 50-50. 50, 50, she might come for our halftime show for an interview, and 50, she won't. So that's what's coming up at halftime. But also, this is pretty exciting for Desert Christian. The middle school cheerleaders are joining the high school squad and are going to entertain the fans at the half. So whether we have Rachel or not, we're going to have some great entertainment for you. Again, coming up from LHS, this neutral site. 10.46 on the second quarter clock. It remains 12-0 Desert Christian. A single man with him in the backfield. And now, let's see if they're going to call a timeout. They do call a timeout, so we'll break as well. As we noted, Desert Christian shutting out Milken so far in this ballgame. In their last three meetings, Desert Christian has been quite, again, I would say, dominating over this Milken team. They've won two of three. We'll be right back. Back to live action, and here they go on a fourth and ten. They're going to go for an open over the shoulder catch. They're in for the touchdown. The Milken squad is finally broken through. Here at the 10:26 mark of this second quarter, and make it more interesting. 12 to six. Now, 
Will they bring out the two-point conversion or elect the extra point? Two missed extra points in this ballgame may come back and haunt this desert Christian team. We'll find out. No, they're going for the two-pointer. Maybe that's it. That's a good perspective. Even from uh, uh, the PAT. Yeah, handoff. And is he in? He is in. Number 10 that time for Milken, Connor Klein. We are talking about, again, the talented Milken team with Akiba Mousse, but they really went overtime talking about how talented and gifted Connor Klein is. Now he was the one that took it into the end zone for the two pointer. And now it's 12 to eight, like a baseball like score. We're gonna keep it right here. We've got to get those hand warmers and I got a couple of them on Amazon. You just hold it in your hand it feels so hot, it feels like your hand is going to burst into flame. But right now, Annabelle could use it, but how would she be able to handle the camera, right? Right? The talented L28 video crew has now expanded into the local sports realm. How about that? And these are Spartan conditions. No doubt about it, but we love it. So here we go with 10.26 remaining here in this, the first half. And teeing it up at the 30 right now will be Milken. First time in a game situation where Desert Christian will get a chance to receive. And they're just going to let it go out of the end zone. So I haven't seen one kickoff return. The kickoff specialist of Desert Christian saw it fly over his head, and he gave up on it. Ball placed at the 20. And right now, that's where Desert Christian will set up shop right now, first to 10. 10.06 to go. Heritage League opener. And the wind, well, I was going to say it started to possibly shut down, but now another strong gust just came through. Quarterback Francisco Balcorta. I don't have a statistician. I believe he did get the first score in the ball game. And the give on the right side, scurrying up all the way to the 20 yard line. A gain of five that time for Desert Christian. It was either two scores by Noah Bakewell. We know Noah had at least one. But nonetheless, those two scores, and then just a moment ago, able to answer back coming through on their own, and a two-point conversion was Milken. Stepping back, he has the time. He's gonna run, no, he's being flushed out of the pocket. And then he throws a wobbler, and oh, it went in and out of the hands that time of the Again, Desert Christian receiver, Raymond Lattimore. The thing was wobbling all over the place. It looked like a dying quail. I don't think Raymond knew where it was going to wind up. Like a meteor coming down to earth. That's why, again, developing the talent of the tight spiral just makes life easier for your receivers. Blue clad desert Christian team, the Knights versus the Wildcats. That's who you've got here in this 
football night on L28. Now under intense pressure, and right there, Balcorda had nowhere to go. A swarming, sweeping defense on the part of the Wildcats, and Balcorda was trapped. So the sack registered, and let's see what they, how much they ultimately lose. The scoreboard says second and five, but over on the sideline, they're showing fourth down. At least 14 yards to get a first down. There we go, fourth and 13, that is. So here comes the punting unit. Against the wind, and that's a wobbly kick. Ends up, looks like one of my four irons at the golf course shanked over on the left side. Out of bounds, it'll be good ball position for Milken. Starting off in just a moment here. 8.46 remaining. And with the score 12 to 8, we'll be right back. Back to live action, and the handoff right now for Milken. The ball carrier takes it and makes his way past the 35-yard line. Possibly 25, yeah. 25, 24, that is. That's where it will be spotted. Second and 10, it shows. And there's the cheer crowd, the merging of the middle school and the high school cheerleaders. They'll be coming up at the half. As for the matter at hand right now, 8.09 to go, 12 to 8. Vogel is their quarterback, two men behind him, and he's going to throw the football. This is going to be a laser shot up the middle, and it's not going to get near Akiva Mose that time. Great coverage on the part of Desert Christian. They were all over him, like an old suit. And with it, 7.54 to go, and it remains 12 to 8. So we're happy to report, I know that we put out the promo for the athletic director to come over, but instead we've got the principal Brian Roseboro, principal of Desert Christian, will be our halftime guest. Looking forward to it. Under pressure, he still dumps it off. He's got the receiver on the right side who will waltz in for a touchdown. And yes, no flag, no penalty. They get the score. I never saw a quarterback under so much pressure just threw it up there. And then out of nowhere, a tremendous catch in traffic. On the part of Milken, and with six more points, they now go ahead, just like that. So last week we had a blowout, much to the chagrin of the East Side fans, but uh, we got ourselves the making of a good ball game and an excellent second half coming up here at LHS. 14 to 12, Milken. They're going for the two-pointer. They love it. They feel confident. Stutter step. He will take it by his lonesome. Now on the left side, he's in for the two-point conversion. Vogel's great athleticism made the difference, and now it's 16 to 12. So with the wind continuing to buffet us in our open-air broadcast position, High above the western sideline here at LHS. Milken goes ahead 16-12. We'll be right back.
Back to live action, 16 to 12, Milken. The kickoff. Look at the, again, return specialist. He doesn't even look at it. It's not only kicked out of the red zone and beyond the end zone, completely on a normal field. Remember, we're playing eight-man football and only 80 yards and a shorter width of the field. Lends itself to more scoring. So let's see if they're going to put it at the 20. It looks like there's a penalty. A penalty on Desert Christian. So the placement of the football, the 15. Francisco Balcorda. Let's see if he can move the team downfield. He has a big El Capitan that he must scale this time, knowing now they're down by four points. Got it on the shotgun. Quick throw on the flat. Taking the grab that time and being pushed down, I don't think out of bounds, so the clock will continue to run. Looks like number 38, but I don't trust that. If it was 28, Seth Zelko, or check that, Seth Zeko, Z-E-K-O. Right now, we've got a second and nine, so Seth was able to pick up one on that quick pass play, again, on that out pattern. With two, right now, Knights flanking him left and right. Quarterback Valcorta barking out signals, and then the give is straight up the middle, a big gain of five or six, and I believe that was Noah Bakewell. Third and nine. I don't believe that's so. You can see where the flags are placed. They've got themselves two or three yards to go to get the first down. There we go. Now it's third and three. Scoreboard operator got straightened out. Six twelve, six eleven, six ten to go in the second. And Desert Christian now down by four. On the sweep, the right side, taking it, and then knocked out of bounds and hit hard, but he gets up. Good, strong, resolute guy. And it's showing number 38. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't have a 38 on my scoreboard or on my roster. But it was a great game nonetheless. Good enough for a first down. 547. Desert Christian for the first time in this ball game after two scores to get the game going. They're the ones now down by four. Drop down quickly. It's going to take two. Wildcats to get the job done, but immediately met there by Connor Klein. So effusive in praise of Connor Klein was Aaron Williams. They know what a great offensive threat he is, but as a linebacker, according to Williams, he said, boy, he really does know how to cut across the field at angles. He plays a scientific style of linebacker for Milken. That was the praise from Desert Christian coach Williams. 4.53 to go. And now, all of a sudden, tightening up is this defense for Milken. Here's the give. A little stutter step, a pirouette, makes his way himself almost close to midfield. Ball will be spotted at the 46 or 47. No, actually 45. A gain of five that time. And it's showing now third and five on the scoreboard. Friday night lights on Thursday in Lancaster. Plenty of games tomorrow as well. And then we're back on next week 
with homecoming here in Lancaster High. Stepping back, Valcorta then flushed out, decides to throw it quickly, left side. The catch was made and a gain of two. Milken 16, Desert Christian 12. So glad you're with us as the historic march goes on with these broadcasts on L28. We took the wrapping off the present last week, and now we're veterans. Funny thing is we got to start off the first three broadcasts, including next week, right here at Lancaster High. From the left hash mark, in the reduced field of eight-man football. They're going to now punt the football. Without the wind behind them, still a good kick. It takes a Desert Christian bounce, grabbed by the Milton player. The return specialist is brought down from behind. None other than Akiva Musse. Remember, he was brought off the field a few minutes ago, was able to walk off his own volition, but he's back in there. For Milken and right there after that hit he's got his hands on his knees and moving very slowly trying to retain his breath trying to get his breath back 244 on the second quarter clock four point lead Milken is going to be pushed back right now as they find themselves all the way back with this major penalty it may have been a late hit yeah, 15-yarder. And as a result, they'll be in a jackpot right now behind the eight ball, so to speak. Find themselves spotted at around the 12. Their own 12. The wind in a howling light mode here in the evening in Lancaster. A sweep along the left side and collared that time. So Desert Christian, not showing much charity right there, bringing the player down very hard, showing they can be an aggressive team as well. That was Connor Klein, the one who's, again, so gifted on D for this Milken team. He was brought down hard. 2.18 to go. Our halftime guest, Brian Roseboro. The talented principal over at Desert Christian. Look forward to speaking with him. 2.05 to go. Steps back. Now works his way. A quick flip and in traffic. No way to make the catch as it's broken up. And that'll bring on a second and four. We were commenting on the east side crowd last week, and all they had to do was make, what, a six to eight mile sojourn over here last week. A small group, but vociferous, but really hard and more difficult for Milken coming from LA. And they've got some hardy souls out there on their side of the stadium cheering on their team. Now we're inside two minutes to go. Here's the quarterback's throw, and he finds a receiver and he drops it. The usually reliable Mousse, but again, he's been banged up and battered out there just to have the presence of mind to stay again alert. It says a lot about him. 151 remaining on that incomplete pass. Clock is stopped. And it remains 16 to 12 Milken. Fourth and four, punting unit onto the field right now for the Wildcats. Here's a kick, and that one just, again, is a ground ball in baseball parlance, a ground ball down to the second baseman. He's going to leave it alone, and they're going to spot it at the 18-yard line. The punter missed that completely, kicked it off to the side of his foot. Really shanked it.
137 to go. So Milken, undaunted after the first two scores, gave Desert Christian a 12-point lead. They missed both their extra points. And now after the punt, ball now placed at their own 18-yard line. Alcorta with a man in motion behind him. Wants it. Hand off to Bakewell. Bakewell the gain off tackle three yards. So Bakewell an important uh, again contributor on Desert Christian. Coming in this ball game, he had acquired 129 yards on the ground, almost five yards a carry. Now down to an even minute to go here in the fir first half. Second and six, flags are flying, and then here's the bomb, and through the fingers that time of the intended receiver, but it would have been called back, no doubt. There are flags everywhere. We'll see what the ruling is from the officials. The call right now is on Desert Christian. They are the offending party. 48 seconds to go. The main thing for Desert Christian to air it out with a big heave at this junction of the ball juncture of the ball game would seem foolhardy. Why take the chance of it being picked off and then Milken waltzing in for a score? Maybe you just want to put the knee down, let the clock run out, know you're down by only four, go back in the locker room and plot st strategy for the second half. We'll see what happens. He wants to take it by himself. Always the risk of a fumble, though. The quarterback has it. Eludes one. Cuts across the field. He's still on his feet. He's all the way up to the 20 before he's knocked out of bounds. Out of bounds means the clock will now extinguish, stop running. It is at 33.7 seconds to go. Tremendous open field run that time for Francisco Valcorda. A very exciting moment in this ball game, particularly when we were already primed in our pregame conferences with the coaches. They said, there's going to be a lot of open field running, a lot of excitement. But that is, a, as far as this game goes, that was the first breakaway I've seen in this game. 33.7 seconds ago, and we've got ourselves a timeout in the field. Now they will plot strategy. Now I have the athletic director, the talent athletic director here next to me, Rachel Edwards. I had already promoted the halftime show with your principal. I didn't want to say you flaked out. Now I'm going to have a battle between principal and athletic director. Who's going to get on the air? Where is he? He was right here. Why don't we have him interview you? And then halfway through, turn about fair play. If you're here first, you're in. Okay. 33.7 seconds to go. A tremendous breakaway that time on the part of your quarterback. And now they may be able to get a score here. A uh, field goal won't cut it. Won't get them the lead, but a touchdown would. All right. Taking the right now. Off tackle, right side, ball carrier has it. Four or five white-shirted Milton players hitting him very hard and got up to at least the 20-yard line. Bakewell again. We mentioned how his dad, or at least I was told this, is an employee for the city of Lancaster. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, that's true. Yes. His name is John Sanders. Yes. All right. Got it all. I haven't met him yet, but I look forward to it. Great. We have a timeout here on the field. This is Noah's comeback season. Oh. Last okay. year, in okay. a practice, a freak accident took him out for the entire season. Oh. He didn't play one second of one game. And his freak accident was what? Just um, a, his, own, his own teammate just in a practice just stepped on him funny and something snapped and that was it. So. But a, a really courageous, heroic story. He's able to return. Absolutely, yes. Thanks for that insight. I didn't even know that. Several months. Um, no, last that whole season was rough. So, and we, our, our games are is a, is a winning game. Um, no, you could be milking their team with the long passes. That's that's their their call. So we got to take it on them. Great. Grind it out. Twenty-seven seconds to go. Another time on the ground. This time on the left side, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds. Looks like that time was number. It was Frankie. Yeah. It was Frankie. Oh, it was the quarterback. Held on to it himself and was able to get a gain of about five. Second and six, so they save a four yard gain. 19.9 seconds to go. They would dearly love to push it into the end zone here. That would be great. All right, 18.9 seconds, 16 to 12, Milken, both teams with consecutive scores, and now, turn about fair play, Desert Christian's turn. Here's the pass, over on the right side, a spiral, it's caught, it is a Desert Christian touchdown. What a throw that time, Francisco Valcorda kneeling Steven Weiser, the sophomore, and again, a, that time, Mrs. Edwards, a very tight, excellent spiral. Absolutely, right when he needed it. Six more points, and now in this topsy-turvy roller coaster game, with the six points, you're going to talk about 18. They didn't call it back. The officials having a long conference over there near the red zone. And they're going to disallow it. We saw that happen over and over again in our first broadcast last week, how the officials got involved. That was a perfect spiral, a great catch, and it's going to be brought back. It's showing fourth and five on the scoreboard, 14.4 seconds ago. And you can forget about the Desert Christian lead right now. They will have another chance at it, but will they go for it on fourth down? Instead, there's a timeout on the field. We'll break as well, as we said. Seconds remaining in this first half, 16 to 12, Milken will be right back. They're going to call back that touchdown. The catch was a great one on the part of Weiser. I'm going to say his feet were out of bounds. We missed it. But the good folks up here on the sideline was able to see it. And here's another opportunity. The play action. Valcorda holds on to the football. Now here he goes. Right side. Eludes one. Eludes a second one. Knocked out of bounds. And when he does go out of bounds, the clock stopped with 3.8 Lonely seconds to go. Yeah, that's right. But what can he do? That was a fourth down. He went for it. Now it's going to be, again, something that any coach 
never like with 3.8 seconds to go, uh, the chance for a breakaway play or something like that. All right, Milken has it deep, deep in their own territory, all the way back at their own, it looks like three yard line. No, they're gonna get another shot at it. So here it is with the football, Desert Christian, and they throw it and it's incomplete. Hit hard was the quarterback that time. They ended up with it. That wasn't explained to me, but that ran out the clock. I can explain that. They got one last chance at it that time. Well, the scoreboard remains 16 to 12 Milken, and we're gonna have Rachel Edwards, the athletic director of Desert Christian joining us at the half in just a moment here on, again, football night in Lancaster on L28. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back here to LHS, the neutral site for tonight's game. Again, football night in Lancaster on L28. 
16 to 12 right now. Milken holds the lead over Desert Christian. Very special guest joining us, Rachel Edwards. She's a talented athletic director at Desert Christian. And Rachel, how did you like the first half? Your team scored first, but Milken came back. They did. Thank you for noticing that, Ronnie. Uh, you know, we came into this game tonight knowing that we needed to play our game, which is that, that running game. And we knew Milken would come with their passes. They do well at those deep passes. And we were ahead early on. And then just we had a couple of little f fobbles ourselves. And gosh, Milken just saw an opportunity and came right back. So I'm hopeful second half, though. We're in that locker room right now making some adjustments, taping our little boo-boos. And we're going to come back out here and be stronger. Now, uh, you have a son. Boy, he's a big guy, 6'1". He eats out your house and home, I'm sure. But uh, number 99, tell us about him. So your son, you have a special connection because you were a graduate of Desert Christian yes. and your son plays for them. Talking about a heartfelt heartfelt feeling, I know, right? I, know. I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but being a parent and seeing your kid living out their dream, but it's like full circle for you, for you personally. Um, it's pretty spectacular. I'm so proud of him. He's living his best life. And, you know, he had an injury. Unfortunately, he's out. I, we'll see if he gets back in the game tonight. But, you know, we, we go over every play after every single game. And uh, he, he's, he's my boy. I love him. I'm so proud of him. Rachel, tell us about the people here working uh, the scoreboard and, I believe, PA, because you said they're long-term Desert Christian alumni and associated with the school. And that's amazing. Beyond you telling me who they are, I'd like you also to explain that connection, that lineage, where yeah. people that go to Desert Christian are connected for life, yeah, right? Right. You know, Antelope Valley has grown a lot over um, my lifetime. I've seen it just, you know, ex expand, and it's it's it's. There's a lot of people here. A lot of people have been raised here, and then they've settled here, and they're raising their kids, and so. Desert Christian, because of our longevity here in the city of Lancaster, we have a lot of families now that are coming back, and, and they're alumni, and they're bringing their kids. So um, we have a lot of volunteers, um, coaches, our coaching staff that come and do that. Uh, Mark, our announcer, um, he's a longtime um, member of our staff, although he's not an alumnus him himself. Um, his, his sister has been a longtime um, part of our school and from extended family, and his kids go to our school. Um, his wife is one of our coaches. He's one of our assistant coaches. He teaches at the middle school. So that's Mark Rondo. And then over on our clock and scoreboard is Mike Miller. He was, I think, two years behind me at Desert Christian. I was class of 94. I think he's class of 96. And um, he's back at, at our high school um, teaching. And uh, he is, like, if you want factoids about Desert Christian, Mike is the guy to go to. He knows a lot of history. He was our first male cheerleader back in the day, which was pretty spectacular a real he's, groundbreaker yeah he is a very accomplished cheerleader he went on into the military and now he's back his kids are grown he's a grandpa himself and uh, he just finds ways to make himself useful and be a blessing to our school and so he's running our clock teaching some of our teens how to do it as well and he knows the game um he as well could be an announcer if he wanted to he's got the equipment and he's done it before so we just we're so blessed with such a wide range of people that just love our school and give of their time and and their talents and uh and, and our and our donors are we have a big donor pool as well we're very thankful for them as well and how about your status here at lancaster high school as your home field yeah. uh will that continue it's been going on a long time i was told it's almost a 20-year association you know lancaster high school is the closest high school to us we don't have our own facilities and they are just so wonderful to work with they're very generous of their time and their space um i have you know, if, if their field is available, they allow us to use it. We're very blessed. Um, you know, we're under the lights. We've got, you know, they set up for us. They've got security guards here helping us, you know, run run the location. We're very thankful for Lancaster High School. And, um, you know, we play them in a couple of other sports, um, but they're an 11-man football team, so we don't have that rivalry necessarily in this particular sport. But so thankful for them. A shout-out to David, the athletic director at Lancaster High School, for his work to just, you know, what do you need? Hey, we're, we'll, we'll make it happen I want to thank you for coming by wish we had more time but uh that, that was pretty easy wasn't it yeah, yeah. We're just hanging out. there you go that's what it's all about <laughs> except with this thing in the middle right? but but thanks again for coming by and you're again made us feel the homespun aspect yeah. welcoming us yeah. for this game thank you again of course absolutely we'll have more after this you're watching l28 
Hello. Hello. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. We're here at Lancaster High School Stadium, known affectionately as the Eagle's Nest. It's a neutral site, but as we just had Rachel Edwards on a moment ago, our great halftime guest, she's Desert Christians AD. She had a long-term, almost 20-year relationship in, again, assuming that this Lancaster Field, the Eagle's Nest, is also the home of Desert Christian, and they love it over here. And kudos go out to the athletic staff of the Lancaster High School, making them feel so welcome. And uh, this is their home too, and they're enjoying it. Right now, they're not enjoying the score. They're behind a visiting Milken, 16 to 12, in a roller coaster affair so far here at LHS. So in just a moment, both teams now head on back out there. We repeat ourselves during the broadcast because we know how many people come in and out of it. So it's not because I'm having problems upstairs. <laughs> this is, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, no, uh, I just want to repeat the blue clad Desert Christian team from Lancaster against the LA based white and blue panted Milken team. Uh, Desert Christian known as the Knights, the Sobriquet for Milken, the Wildcats. Ooh. And uh, again, Milken one and three, zero oh and two in league. That seems strange, right? They play two league games. This is the first league game of the year for Desert Christian, and here we go. And of course, in an 80-yard field, this is eight-man football. It is again out of the end zone. So the exciting aspect that they keep telling me about the eight-man game, a lot of scoring and all that nary a kickoff return which is one of the most again exciting moments in football the open field running right yeah we don't we haven't seen one of those in this game nonetheless starting from their own it looks like 15 yard line yeah will be desert christian the quarterback francisco balcorta has been the field general tonight. His dad is on the staff of Desert Christian Coaching. He elects to hand it off. It's on the left side. It doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. It is a loss that time for DC. And I'm not talking about District of Columbia. I'm talking about, yeah, not talking about politics right now. As Coach Williams told me before the game, our defense needs to make, again, their quarterback. Milken's quarterback, Vogel, throw off his back feet. Again, Desert Christian started off so beautifully. Then we watch the big mo, the momentum shift over to Milken. As right now, it's second and 11. And just the start of things here in the second half. Pull yourself up a chair, a futon. How about a piece of rug and enjoy it? Here's the throw, the laser shot, and it will go out of bounds and nobody was near it. So a mixed up assignment that time, I would think. Bringing on the third and 11. Our producer, camera person, doing yeoman's work, Annabelle. And here we are. We're enjoying, this will be, uh, let me do, I'm not a math major, okay? Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -da. Uh, our 42nd year in Southern California sports play-by-play. -play. And it doesn't get any warmer, and the press box is open air. We're out amongst the customers. Man in motion, Balcorta. 
surveying the field. Will he run? No. He does dump it off, and it is knocked away. He seems to be everywhere. The peripatetic one. I'm talking about Connor Klein. He's been outstanding in this game and lived up to the billing. Both coaches effusive in their praise of Connor before the game. Over here on our left side, we've got Farron. She's getting some shots out here. Maybe I shouldn't say that if her mic's on, but she put a promo together. I must have watched that 20 times last night. After the 19th time, you say, Ronnie, get a life. But it was excellent, really. A lot of talent on the L28 staff. As now, here comes the punting unit, and against the wind, a good punt takes the Desert Christian bounce, grabbed by that time, number 20 of Milken, that's Theo Fleischman. They brought him down quickly and hard, but no hard feelings. All in the game of football. And let's see if they're going to place it where he was brought down. He did, I thought for a moment, call the fair catch. Spotted at the 45, almost near midfield. And even 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Don't you dare leave again. However, in whichever way you're getting this broadcast, City of Lancaster website or Facebook or YouTube, don't go anywhere. This is a nail biter. 16 to 12, only a four point lead as now Milken will take over on their own 45. The quarterback steps back, his name is Vogel. He wants to throw it. Hail Mary variety and can't make the grab. Heroic effort, but an outstanding defense. Perpetuated that time, the big D, and I don't mean Dallas. And he went high for it, scaled the ladder, and couldn't bring it to terra firma. Talking about number two, Ethan Gabayan. Another player that was full of praise from his coach. Head coach Elliot Turner said Gabayan, the backbone of the Wildcat defense and offense. And just inches away from a great catch a moment ago. In motion, that's Dinser. Here it is, it's thrown quickly on the screen. No doubt coming in quickly was the linebacker that time of Desert Christian. He was blitzing all the way. Hayden Ramirez was in there. Put extreme pressure on the quarterback Vogel, an incomplete pass, and now it's third and ten. The Weather Channel said temperatures in the 60s. They said that this morning. They were right. <laughs> it is. Not quite bone chilling, but getting there. Now a quick throw. Oh, that was no doubt under intense pressure was the quarterback. He just threw it away, and that is called intentional grounding, there's no doubt. Everybody saw it up here, and the official saw it down there. 9.48 remaining in the third, 16 to 12. All of a sudden, the Desert Christian defense has come alive, blitzing, putting intense pressure on the quarterback. Again, going back to the imprimatur of the coach before the game, we need to get Vogel to throw off his back feet, not step up. That time, no feet. He just threw it down into the turf, disgusted. And the punting unit on the field right now for the Wildcats. Check it out. It's fourth and 16. They're coming in quickly again. He got it off. And look, wind dated. Grabbed by the return specialist. He turns the corner right side. And then he decides not to fight it and cut back upfield. He just goes out of bounds at midfield. Number five, Steven Weiser. Remember, he made the remarkable catch near the end of the first half. And it looked like, again, Desert Christian would go ahead. Well, Weiser made a nice move this time. Turn about fair play, retribution even though that was called back. This one was not, but was it? The official's going to call it back. There was a flag on the field. 
Steven Weiser has been snake bit tonight. Twice, golden opportunities to rack up big yardage, all for naught. And so it remains 16 to 12. Let's see what they're gonna finally put the yardage down. Look at those sticks making the move backwards. It's so defeating, so deflating to lose again the yardage you work so hard to gain. And that's what's happening right now for Desert Christian. By the way, in case you're interested on how these teams face in the rankings of the Southern section, DC is number 20, Milken number 17, both in the top 20. And pretty evenly matched tonight. Pitch out, left side, Bakewell. He's hit hard. It's a loss that time for Desert Christian. Noah's only 5'8", 190. But you know at 5'8", 190, he's got a low center of gravity. So the defensive specialist hit him low. I could feel it up here, that collision. Nine oh nine remaining in the third. Now Annabelle is going to the next step. She put the hoodie on a little while ago. Now she's tying it tight. Only her eyes remain. We need that for camera work. Taking the football and pushing forward, following blockers, brought down hard. You see the game is getting more physicality. There's some athletes out there who are well conditioned because as a game wears on, usually you start to see players start to droop at the shoulders, a uh, disconsolate type of look. They're tired, not this group. They've got the afterburners going. They took a shot of oxygen or whatever, H2O, and they are going at it. They want the W tonight. No doubt Desert Christian here at home for the league opener. Milken, well, they're 0-2 in league. Both teams fighting for the win. A quick pitch out. Now, the stutter step. Remains on his feet, then brought down. Almost good enough for Desert Christian first down. Not quite. That time he lost his blockers. That time he had to invent. And again, just shy of the first down. Fourth and two. That golden moment. What will you do? Fourth and two. They're going to go for it. There's confidence there in the front line to block. And it's straight up the middle. It's a big gain. It's a first down and then some for the Knights. The opening was there, the cavernous opening, and he took full advantage of it. A little bit of limping this time. Rubbing the left leg that time. No doubt Noah Bakewell. So a massive gain, a first down, clock being chewed up at seven minutes to go in the third. 16 to 12 it remains, Milken leading it. Hope you're enjoying it. Here on L28. Planking uh, the quarterback, Valcorta, is a couple right now of Knights on both sides. He hands off to one of them, hoping to get some area to move in, and then he remains on his feet, back the other way. Cutting across field, one man to beat, he does beat him on his way to glory and the touchdown. Raymond Lattimore. Raymond turned left, saw there was no opening. Right there, all the Wildcats converged, they shall not pass. Raymond had another idea. So turned on a dime and moved around the right side. 
And with his great speed, he overcame one wildcat and outran him all the way into the promised land. There's your score that now has allowed Desert Christian to go ahead now, 18 to 16. We have ourselves a dandy of a ball game, worth the price of admission. Wait a minute, I used my CIF press pass here. <laughs> I'll take care of them later. 18 to 16, they're going for the two point conversion. Up the middle, the tightening, stiffening defense that time of the Wildcats, and they would not allow it. So instead of it being 20 to 16, a simple field goal can put Milken back ahead. The roller coaster affair. Three lead changes so far, and we expect more. And then, unfortunately, right now, on the field is a Knight player. He is getting up. He's going to be able to walk his own. No, he is limping quite notice, noticeably over there. Now he's putting more weight on the right foot that a moment ago he was limping. He is getting help off the field. Yeah, it's Noah, Noah Bakewell, who is such a, an amazing and important contributor on this Desert Christian team. He's putting more and more weight on that, even though, again, he's being helped. Uh, for a couple moments, though, he wasn't going to even apply that foot to the turf. But right now, he is on the table, and they're stretching his leg. And we're going to see, again, the disposition of it and if he's going to be okay or not. Sure hope so. A score a moment ago. Denied two extra points and a two-point conversion. That means Desert Christian has lost four precious points tonight. Will it come back to haunt them on this Thursday night in Lancaster? Hoorah. All right. End over end variety kick. Chasing after it. And now he's got it. Mousse. They swarm all over him. He had nowhere to go. All of a sudden, this, again, Desert Christian defense has really awakened. I'm not going to say they were in a first-half stupor, but they've awakened whatever head coach Aaron Williams extolled to them and built them up and implored to them at half. It's working right now. Good enough for a two-point lead. 6-11 remaining. You know, some eight men teams, and there's over a 1,000 across America. Some games only go eight-minute quarters. This is very similar to the regular high school football, 12-minute quarters, and we see it in evidence tonight. In fact, there's over 1,100 eight-men teams with 108 alone in the Golden State of California, and here is the handoff, a gain of one or two that time on the part Again, of the Wildcats of Milken. Are you interested in the heritage standings? Well, Faith Baptist has run the table to 3 0. Lancaster Baptist at 3 1. Santa Clarita Christian at 3 1. And Milken right here, 1 3. And of course, Desert Christian, 1 2. Now you are up to date on the Heritage League race. Back to live action, 5.32 to go. Vogel wants it with confidence. Sets back, quick throw up the middle between coverages, a diving catch and a good one for a completion. Number two, Ethan Gabayan. Now down to 5.08. And again, that razor thin, nebulous. Two-point lead. And we've got a lot of football to go. Five minutes here and 12 more in the fourth quarter. How will it all shake out? 
a trio of Wildcats, and now they send one to line up. And, yes, in eight-man football, if you lined up at the end of the line, you become the ex officio tight end. You could be a receiver. Caught at the line of scrimmage? No. Uh, possibly a gain of one, but, again, the uh, defense has improved so much for Desert Christian. And I believe Milken, which had the long ride up here, I remember a few years back I did a CIF playoff at Antelope Valley College for Montebello. They were playing Paraclete. It was a long bus ride coming up, even longer going back because Montebello had lost that game. By the way, Paraclete has a new stadium, and we'll be broadcasting from it October 6th. Yeah, the Antelope Valley College Stadium is gorgeous, but Paraclete finally has a new home. As for this one, snap in midair, having to fall on it, a bevy of shirts, blue and white, and now they're motioning. Desert Christian may have grabbed it. A late flag, that means a late hit. So whoever wound up with it, that's one thing. The late hit is a major penalty. Let's see how it all shakes out right now. With the wind continuing well over 20 miles an hour, wind chill factor making it much colder than 60 degrees that the National Weather Service told us about. And yes, the penalty will be called right now on Milken. Just waiting for it to all be explained with, again, inside three minutes to go, 244 to go, to be exact. And it is Desert Christian football. Fourth and two. Driving. Just a moment ago, is Milken football. So I don't believe with fourth and two, it can be Desert Christian football. So let's see. They still haven't worked it out and explained it. Still a T to T, a mini summit going on down there and still no resolution. Now the scoreboard says first and 10. It's going to go back over Desert Christian, losing possession was Milken. I'll tell you, the officials got so involved in our last Friday's broadcast, it did go in a laborious manner, as slow as molasses that game. The officials not as involved in this one, but certainly this has taken a lot of time. All right. First and 10. Ball spotted at nowhere else but the 12-yard line. Desert Christian football. Here's the handoff, a gain of one, but pushed back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss. To get an idea of the win, just take a look at the zebra down there, the official, and look at his sleeve and the rippling of the sleeve from the intense wind. I expect it up here in our higher elevation, being up here on the western sidelines of the stands, but the wind is down there swirling on the field as well. But we're not complaining in California. It's still clear out. We've, I've done myself broadcast in the state of Washington in driving rain and sleet, what they call real football weather. Nowhere near that here. All right, one more time. A gain of two, second and eight. Balacorda barking out signals. Does he head it off? Yes, he does. A sweep on the right side, but then met by a duo of Wildcats that time and brought down hard, nowhere to go. Will Balacorda, now 38th, go back to the aerial game? Air Desert Christian. Let's see. Because the running game has failed them in this sequence. 38th. 2.57 remaining.
we've had to give the score quite a bit. Do we have Annabelle score on our, they do get the score. How about the time? Okay, will we have that next week at the homecoming? Oh, thumbs up. The full-fledged L28 contingent will be there, like an army, bringing you graphics and taking a lot of pressure off this broadcaster. Okay, step back. He will throw it. Oh, it's almost picked off. Oh, he had his hands on his helmet, that look of incredulity. If I could see that look through the helmet, but I feel, I feel the incredulity because it was, Mose makes that catch. He may have been off to the races and he had the speed to make it happen. Instead, it's fourth and eight. So at a critical moment in the ball game, when we already talked about the Knights defense stepping up, it turned out the Wildcat defense came through admirably right now. Fourth and eight, the field goal unit on the field. Would it be possible after two missed extra points? Say it ain't so. Let's see. They have more faith in their offensive contingent, the quarterback, the running back, and the wide receivers, but how can they walk away from the opportunity of three points? They're only up by two, 18 to 16. They're gonna go for the field goal. Here it comes. The ball spotted, let's see, at the 12. 22 yard field goal, bad snap, controls it. Here's the kick, it's up, it's good. They need those precious three points because remember they lost four by the way of the missed conversion and the missed extra points. Now they're up 21-16, a five point bulge. 2-11 to go, we'll be right back. You're watching again, football night in Lancaster on L28. Two eleven remaining in the third quarter. Ronnie Wald on a broadcast solo bid coming to you from, again, LHS. One lead chain, change after another. And right now, again, with a couple minutes left in the third, it's Desert Christian with the five-point lead. And here's the kickoff with the ball spotted at the 25. Here it goes. Into the wind means it's a poor kick. Drop that time by Milken, loose ball. I think they did fall on it, I think they did recover it. Dylan Siegel, it went right through his buttery fingers. Hot potato syndrome. I don't know. The idea is that maybe try to pick it up and go forward. There's another school of thought in football that so just fall on it. If you try to pick it up, you're already in a precarious situation. You're having trouble holding on the football. And I've got to believe with this cold weather, it's going to get even increasingly difficult to hold on to the football as we swing into the fourth quarter. Let's see. From the left hash mark, Vogel, the quick throw, takes it himself. Couldn't get by those two defenders. They were waiting like sentries. And that was Logan Dintzer, D-I-N-T-Z-E-R, the 5-800, 30-pounder, trying to sneak through there. 207, 21-16, Desert Christian. and a bit of a discussion over on this near sideline. The wide receiver for Milken drawing it out with the official now back to live game action. 
man in motion. Quarterback wants it, flag on the field, just like that. So officials have been very involved in this, the second half. This uh, second half has been slower, more defensive oriented, because what we were told before the game, the eight man game of football has higher scoring, multi-skilled players requiring agility, speed, and strength. Okay, that's still in evidence out here, but we don't have a high scoring affair, and they've really tightened up in the D to negate one another here in the second half. Vogel steps back one more time, airs it out deep, deflected, a heroic deflection that time by the cornerback over there on the part of Desert Christian. It looks like it was number five, Stephen Weiser. I'm waiting for him to get closer to, again, fully ID Stephen, make sure to give him credit where credit is due. Remember, he had some heartbreaking moments offensively in this ball game, being able to reach up and wiser, able to deflect it. If he doesn't get a hand up, then you could just about say Milken would have gotten the TD that time. Down to 118 remaining, 21-16, Desert Christian. Pitch out. Take it on the left side. Working back towards midfield, he remains on his feet. They can't bring him down, and finally he is dragged down. Again, Connor Klein. CK. So Connor Klein was credited by the Desert Christian coach telling us how he was able as a linebacker scientifically to go after ball carriers at an angle. That time he showed that same skill as a running back as he again turned at an angle right and got a couple more yards out of it. But still, nonetheless, it only got back to the line of scrimmage. Can that be true? It says first and 40. I don't, I don't think so. First and 10. That scoreboard gave us a lot of trouble last week. Now, play action. Here it is. Oh, he doesn't want the long throw. He faked it, tried to dump it off between coverages up the middle, it was dropped, and right now the Milken player, for a moment in time, looked like he was writhing in pain, but it looked like his ego was in pain by missing that catch. No, he is limping off. So ego and, again, a bit of a leg injury makes it for Ethan Gabayan to step off and go back to the sideline. 41 seconds to go in the third. Oh, the fourth quarter should be a barn burner tonight. What a way to spend a Thursday night, I'll tell you. Glad you're with us on L28. Three minutes remaining. Oh, 30 seconds. I got the colon in the wrong place there. 30 seconds. Are they going to go for it? The big score? or just keep it on the ground. Well, intentions are he wants to throw it. He throws it deep, open man! Oh, it went into his bread basket and bounced off his chest. Oh, you can see how depressed he is out there. Milkins, wide receiver. He'll remember that for many, many long days to come. It can bring nightmares. The one that got away. Remember when they accused the Patriots of deflating the football? That time, there was proper inflation in the football. It just bounced off his hard chest. He couldn't bring it home like a newborn baby to the mother. He just bounced away. 21 seconds remaining. On the ground! It's going to be a major pickup! Left side! He's got to get it around one more man to get in! And he's in for the TD! Much to the chagrin of the Desert Christian Partisan on this side, 
The opening was there, a great running play on the part of Milken, and we have our fourth. One, two, three, fourth lead change of the game. Make it five. Okay, that's unofficial, but I think it is five. And you get an idea of this again. Roller coaster affair going on tonight between these two teams. Those six points have given Milken the one point lead. If you kick the point after touchdown, you'll have a two point lead and Desert Christian can come back with what? A field goal. No, they want the two and they want it right now. Looking, surveying the field, under pressure, the throw. Did he make the diving catch? No, he did not. Tremendous effort, but he won't be able to pick up the two-point conversion. Went down hard, and they counted on that time Connor Klein, who could not hold on to it as he hit the turf. So 12.9 seconds ago, they've got the 22-21 lead. And we got ourselves a great ball game going on tonight. So kicking it off will be Milken at their own 30 yard line. Remember, every time we've seen a kickoff, it's been a touchback. There's no excitement in the eight man game with the shorter field. Why don't they have them kick it off back at the 30? Then there might be a chance for a kickoff return. Okay, here we go, watch this. See what I mean? Ho hum, makes me wanna yawn. But they'll bring it back out to the 20 and they'll start up things appropriately enough with 12.9 seconds to go in the third and a very razor thin one point milk and lead. We'll be right back. A Desert Christian player being brought back to the training table, Stephen Weiser, hope he's gonna be all right. He seems to be everywhere. We use that term peripatetic. That describes Weiser as now it's 10 seconds ago, handoff left side and there comes a flag. It's a late one, so that means late hit. Frustrations, they've gotta be there. But again, don't let the frustrations take predominance and then affect your play on the field. You got a lot of football remaining here. Seven seconds here and a full 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. Keep your heads together. That would be the proviso from both coaches to their players. Well, major penalty, 15 yarder and look at all that, again, distance gained by Desert Christian because of the foolishness that time of Milken. No criticism, just, again, a proper description, a very foolish foul. And now time has run out. The third, fourth quarter coming, everybody, in a great ball game. Hope you're part of it. Stay right where you are. Milken 22, Desert Christian 21 and you're watching the sports broadcast on L28.
We swing now to the fourth quarter of play. So glad you're with us, everybody. Again, a razor-thin, nebulous one-point lead for this Milken team, making the long sojourn out from L.A., 22-21. A famous general once quoted, it is well that war is so terrible for we should grow too fond of it. A mini war, mano a mano struggle going on tonight in Lancaster here at LHS, the Eagles Nest. Starting off right now, Ballacourt has got it. The give, Bakewell's back in there, and a big gain. It's so great to see that. We didn't know what the, again, diagnosis of his injury, but obviously there he's ready to fly. A gain of eight, bringing up a second and two. Every play fraught with excitement. Every play dramatic and no doubt in a dramatic element. Man in motion that time, that being James Henderson. Ballacorda, the handoff right side, almost a first down, hit very hard. So you know both teams playing that great D in the second half. But that time, Milken a little extra there almost sending a calling card to the Desert Christian player going, yeah, I knocked you out of bounds, but you also may be having to visit the chiropractor on Monday. I don't know. That was a bruising hit. So nevertheless, 10.40 to go in this ballgame. Milken with the one-point lead and Desert Christian marching down the field. At their own 40-yard line. Or check that. At Milken's 40-yard line. They're in enemy territory. Here's the handoff. Push back, and they'll already whistle it, probably right there at the line of scrimmage. I don't think it's going to be a two, three-yard loss. They're going to give him what they call forward progress on that. Not a very vocal crowd out tonight. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are are applauding because they got their hands in their pockets trying to stay warm. Oh, now we just heard the PA announcer just say it. Make some noise. All right, 9.31 to go as the clock is running. It's a fourth and three situation. They're going for it. Oh, the pressure's on right now. Valacorta gets away from one. Now they grab him. Four or five got him. Hands off, he stays on his feet. He's got it on the left side. He's got it. Center step, he gets by that man into the end zone. It's a touchdown. It's Francisco Valacorta, a remarkable run. I thought it was all over. They were swarming Francisco. Then he hung on. He hung in there. Then he turned on the afterburners. You know the winter national drag races at the Fairplex in Pomona? That's what he did. He turned on the afterburners. And then he just had one to beat. He's the quarterback, okay? Not the fastest guy in the field, but that time he was. And with the big, again, score. And one more time for the sixth time in this ballgame, a lead change. Desert Christian, 27. Milken, 22. They haven't had much success with a kicker except, I got to give him some credit, he did kick a field goal, even though he's missed two extra points. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to talk about it. Timeout on the field. 9.08 to go in the ball game. 27-22, Desert Christian. We'll be right back. On again, L28.
A big score, a big gain from Francisco Bellacorta. His dad on the sideline, one of the assistant coaches, you know he has to play it fair. He's assistant coach for his son and everyone. But his heart had to palpitate. He had to have that warm feeling, the cockles of the heart, watching his boy make that move. And it was a spectacular move. And Farron, who edited that great promo video the other day, oh, well, she's right here next to me. I hope she captures that on the next promo. Oh, they tried a two-point conversion. Nowhere to go. He dropped the football, but it's whistled back. And that time, Balacorta, who looked so stunning when he made that 50-yard run, could not walk this one in for the two-point conversion. Denied again. So in this ball game, Desert Christian loses it. I hate to say it. Two missed extra points and two mixed two-point conversions adds up. It adds up to six points. A touchdown. Anyway, it will be Milken football. We'll break again. 9.09 to go. Desert Christian 27, Milken 22. The Desert Christian Cheer Squad, merging the middle school and the high school. I know we missed them at the half. We had a great interview with Rachel Edwards, Desert Christian's talented AD. But uh, I'm sure right now Annabelle's got a shot of them, and we were able to see them in action. Great job tonight. Now back to the matter at hand on the field. Here's your kickoff. 9:03 to go. Really a very, very weak kick it's going to die right there at the 25 or check that 15 picked up by milken oh he goes down hard i never seen a time where akira mose is not involved in the play called a game changer a truly inspirational player i had another metaphor here seems pretty simple but i got to tell you what it is i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking here it comes explosive <laughs> but that time he was hit hard he had to pay for the yards that time 903 on the fourth quarter clock 27 22 desert christian at home their league opener milken desperately wants to win their own two in league on the left side what a big game for milken they got to try to stop him knock him out of bounds or do something and finally they do at the 25 a big milking game gives them a first down. And now they are firmly ensconced in desert Christian territory. Once you get past midfield, it's a different ball game. The defense tightens up. And even though they told us the weather channel temperatures in the 60s, the wind chill factor is evident tonight, and I'm almost sure we're in the 50s. We're feeling it. But we're undaunted. We're here for our viewers. Glad you're aboard. Here's the throw now. Open look. Has a chance. It's going to be pass interference. He did make the catch, but the flag was thrown where the catch was made. That means P.I. And I talk about Magnum P.I. I mean pass interference. So let's see where they're going to spot it. Again, we, we spoke about that in the first half. In the NC2A and the pro realm, that would be first down at the point of the infraction. In high school football, it's a 15-yard. 15-yard advance and then first down. And that's a big break for Milken. Six lead changes. Are we going to have a seventh? If a game like this doesn't get you excited and you get into ER, you may be flatlining. No, really. I mean, this is excitement. Heart palpitation, looking for the seventh lead change. 
and he's gonna take it by himself, and he's in without a defensive countering that time. Walks it in beautifully, Vogel. I haven't seen that all night. They were really fooled this time, Desert Christian, on where Vogel would go. He made a stutter step left, shrugged his shoulders, and then headed right for the promised land. I mean, everything's been contested tonight. Everybody's swarming on top of it. That time was a defensive breakdown on the part of Desert Christian. And our new lead change, number seven, Milken, 28, Desert Christian, 27. Kick an extra point. Know that Desert Christian come back with a field goal and go back ahead. Two-point conversion, then that same field goal, there would be a tie. Just thinking ahead. 8.08 remaining. Going for the two-point conversion. Vogel feeling confident. He wants to throw the football. He is an open man. So I must say, you can find the commonality in that touchdown and that two-point conversion because they were so easy for the Milken team. Milken must be going back to their huddle and saying, gee, that was the first time we were able to outwit Desert Christian. Well, anyway, 8.08 to go, 30 to 27. There's the three-point lead. We'll be right back. Again, football night in Lancaster or our sports broadcast, whatever you call it, it's L28. Welcome back to live action, everybody. A great kick. And this one, one of the rare kickoffs that's going to be brought back. And he's got the football right now. Desert Christian swarming all around him like a hornet's nest. Nowhere to go. And the ball placed, I would say, roughly at the 25. Raymond Lattimore on that return. He looked like he had a moment of doubt. Instead of taking advantage of the wide open coverage on the kickoff return, he just hesitated and let them come into his inner sanctum and knock him down. Nonetheless, that's where they'll set up shop right now at around, I would say, the 28, check that, 10, 14 yard line, 14. I'm used to the 80 yard field, yes I am. I'm getting there. 8.02 to go. 30 to 27 Milken. Keeps it on the ground and nowhere to go. I see the Milken bus over there flashing its lights. At least they got a nice ride home. But will that be a happy ride full of celebration or a long disconsolate ride if they lose this ball game. Again, they're 0-2 in league. This game is extremely important for both teams. Checking in, James Henderson, and sitting down right now will be Alejandro Miranda for Desert Christian. Getting some, again, orders from his coach, number three, Francisco Valcorta. All right, we wind it up one more time. Clock running, 7.10, 7.09, 7.08. Ready to go. Valacorta, a stutter step. Now a big throw downfield and broken up. Oh, he threw his fist down. He disappointed as could be was the potential wide receiver over there. There was space between him and two Milken defenders. 
He felt he could have had it. I believe that was Weiser, yeah. Weiser's the one that was brought to the training table and was able to now miraculously go back out there. 6.58 remaining. Tension packed, and right now, Desert Christian. They're the ones behind the eight ball. They're down by three. And it's a big play right now. Most important in this ball game for them. Third and 11. Play action. Balacorta, the throw. He's got a receiver. The big guy, but short of the first down. That was 85 with the catch. C.J. Tuning, 6'3", 235, and I do mean big. So good grab for the big guy. Again, in the eight-man configuration, even if you're one of those big linemen, if you line up on the end of the line, you're eligible to catch a pass. Just think about it. Those big guys could get involved. They grunt. They hit each other hard. But just to get a chance to touch the football, that's special to them. <laughs> Six minutes remaining. The punting unit out and right into the wind, and that went nowhere. I kept talking about when I get to the golf course, and that's when I shanked it. Well, that looked like one of my nine irons that time. Off to the right side. A hook is left, a shank. Uh, slice is right. That was sliced. All right. Blessed with outstanding field position are the Milk and Wildcats. They'd love to have another score and get some padding. There's no moment in this ball game that's more important to this Desert Christian defense than stopping Milken right now. Milken with it. And they stop them appropriately enough with a gain of only one or two that time for the Wildcats. 30 to 27, it remains. A cold, blustery night in the high desert. And the clock running at 5.32 to go. Milk and 30. Desert Christian 27. For the pride of Lancaster, Desert Christian needs a stop, and they need it big time. Holding on the football was Vogel. He fooled everyone, including this broadcaster. Great sleight of hand that time, but in terms of success, he only got a yard. Four fifty-two. The pressure is on. And every tick of this clock is like a water torture. Tick, tick, tick. Particularly if you're Desert Christian down by three. All right, third and eight. He does want the throw. A man knocked down. Are we going to see a flag? A pass interference? No. Now it's going to be fourth and eight. And I'll tell you something. Anytime the legs get intertwined, it's up to the official to say, was it caused in a purposeful manner or did they just accidentally get entwined? Well, obviously the official felt that was an accident. Down went the Milliken, or should I say Milken, <laughs> Milken receiver and incomplete. All right. This moment in time, fourth and eight. Desert Christian feeling it. They need a stop and they need it in a big way. Vogel, the quick throw. He's got the receiver in the first down. That was a planned play. No doubt it was in their playbook. And making the grab, the one they're always saying so many complimentary things about was Connor Klein. All right, that buys them so much precious time. A fresh four downs. 
and they find themselves right now in the red zone. Yeah, they are. Well, at least a little bit outside it. Let's say the 14. Keeping it on the ground, chewing up the precious time and getting over to the left side with a gain of six. That's Milken. One of these coaches, a Texas native, attended Texas Southern, a school that never had any fame at all as we have a timeout on the field. And I'm going to keep it right here, tell this little story about one of the coaches that came out of Texas and attended little-known Texas Southern. And guess who came out of Texas Southern? Michael Strahan. Now... They're big time. Michael of Good Morning America and Fox halftime show. Yeah, that one. So pretty good lineage there. As right now we find ourselves with 408 to go. And now what do you think now? Both of you. Desert Christian needs to stop it and get the ball back. Stopping it's not enough. They got to score. Well, here it is. I won't get your opinion because we're back to live action. Quick throw, and he's going to step in for a touchdown. The completion was made. And all I can say is remember I said how well-conditioned the athletes are, how they've been able to pl play up to the third quarter, but I think they left it on the field on the third quarter because the last few plays for Desert Christian, they've just run out of gas. Whether it's 550 a gallon or not, they run out. And the bottom line is, taking advantage of that was this night, this Wildcat team. They score again. That may have been the death knell of that time for the Knights who played heroically in this game, but their defense let them down in the last couple of minutes. It's 36 27, going for another two point conversion. And you notice what happened to the Desert Christian D? It was nowhere to be found there either. So the last 10 minutes of this ball game, you saw a dissipation on the part of Desert Christian and Milken took advantage of it and was able to go in so easy to the end zone where the first part of the game, all they did was struggle to try to get a score. Seven lead changes, now it's 38-27 and that should be it, but stranger things have happened. We're going to break while we have a chance right now. 3827 Milken will be right back. Here we are with live action, and here's the kickoff through the hands of the return specialist who gets knocked down, remains on his feet. And a great comment. I n noticed the last uh, few minutes how easy it was for Milken to score, and the comment made a moment ago just now, fatigue has set in. You said it better than me. <laughs> oh, by the way, a shout-out to the IT people. Lancaster IT. We're not here without them. Thank you for allowing us to freeze ourselves off here. <laughs> because we have. If they break down, we're back home and hearth in front of the warm fire. Right? So should I be blaming Lancaster IT or glorifying them? Anyway, thanks, guys and gals. We're making it happen. 348 remaining, 3827. Seven lead changes, the score much closer than this final score will indicate. Let's see how they can come back right now. Here's a quick throw. Under pressure, 
It's picked off. It's an interception. Ballancourt is so remarkable in this game. And remember, he had that 50-yard touchdown a little bit earlier. That's his first pick of the game. In fact, I believe that's the first interception of the game. Oh, it's Mousse, the man that's everywhere, the everyman, the omnipotent, omnipresent one. But I'll tell you something, the, that pass was fatigued also. The big Mo is so vital. And uh, you have pe peaks and starts, fits and starts in the game. And if you leave it all in the first half, because it was so com competitive, so combative, you've got to have something in the tank to finish your trip back to Rosamond, if you know what I mean. Oh, big opening, and there's no D this time either. One score after another, it's like two different teams, Jekyll and Hyde on the field, and that'll open it up to 44-27. Again, again, if you've been with us the entire broadcast, that score is not indicative of this game. It's just Milken has turned it on. I can only think of that famous song of the 40s. They are bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. I mean, the three metaphors and broken down. They gave their all, three and a half quarters, but didn't finish. And now they're going to attempt the extra point. Why not give the kicker some, a little bit of opportunity? Try to make it 45 27, 331 to go. Here it comes. The kick is up. It splits the uprights. And there you have it 45 to 27. Lead for the Wildcats of Milken over Desert Christian. And we're going to take a break as well. As we come to the waning final moments of this ball game, we'll be right back. Another great line I just heard besides the fatigue is, ain't it cold up here? <laughs> there was a Baltimore Orioles announcer. His famous line was, ain't the beer cold? No, I would just take the beer out here tonight in Lancaster. It's just cold, straight cold. That was a kick that was a ground ball to the shortstop, and it'll go out of bounds. 61, but what's our chill factor? <laughs> Minus, right. We're not in Antarctica, but, you know, but Californians complain a lot. And I was fortunate to have done games in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle high schools. We had driving, rainstorm, sleet and hail, and people loved it outside, and the players loved it. This is real football. California, you know, a little bit of rain, and they, you know, run for cover. Okay, Balacorta. He's so good scampering, and he'll scamper out of bounds, burning up precious time on the clock. And right now, the clock is the greatest nemesis and greatest enemy of this desert Christian team. Well, last week, we were rooting for East Side to score because, it, yeah, 68-mile bus ride back home or however they're going to get home but not to be shut out against Lancaster. I think even Lancaster fans were happy that they at least broke the ice late in the game. The idea now is for Desert Christian never to give up and always play right to the bitter end. But all this uh, took place the last five minutes. Okay, here's the throw. Out of bounds, incomplete. All this scoring the last five to seven minutes, this deluge of scoring. And I'm not going to give Milken the credit that they, in a crafty way, figured out the Desert Christian defense. Desert Christian 
was spent. They started loading up the, the box uh, at the goal line, at the line, and they kind of, you know, they knew they were going to run the ball probably more, you know, more often than few, and that's what I think. I think you have a good point. And I think strictly, I, nobody wants to make excuses, but they're running on fumes. 3.08 remaining. 46 to 27. Can you, 45 27. Can you believe an 18 point lead after you had seven lead changes in the game? Valacor is scrambling and then is brought down from behind. <laughs> but you know it it did cast a pall over the fans over on the side and they came in with such great hopes it's the league opener they want to look good oh no doubt no doubt, and it was a fun game to broadcast and watch, but a lot of people, if they just look at the score, they're going to be, well, I believe, misled. 2.16 remaining. All right, ready to go, Balacorta. Steps up out of pocket, grab from behind, Oh, and it's caught. That was a folly floater, a dying quail, hard to hold on to that, and particularly in the cold, and then hit hard, getting up slowly, is number 18, Justin Green. Boy, Green has not been a factor in this ball game, but I had a lot of notes on him. In fact, that was his first catch tonight. He had made 11 catches for 130 yards, about 12 yards a catch, and two touchdowns this year. I know that the defense probably felt it was all on their shoulders. And they put out a Herculean, extraordinary effort. And again, there wasn't enough left to make it to the 48 minutes. But still, these two teams match up very well. This was a very good game. Sands the last seven minutes. Okay, Balacorda, I'd love to watch him run. He has so many skills out there. By the way, it's not going to get any easier for Desert Christian. They're on the road, North 14 to 395 to Lone Pine next week. Oh, wow. I wish we were doing that game. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be colder than this in Lone Pine? We're going to come back with the homecoming game back here. We're going to get too familiar to LHS, the Eagle's Nest, a timeout in the field. 112 remaining, and again, the 18-point lead for this Milken team. Yeah, a homecoming, and it will be quite a matchup. Lancaster High versus Little Rock. Yeah. Ballacorta, they find themselves at the 38-yard line of Milken. Steps back. Now, enough time to throw, and he finds a receiver. A bullet down the middle, good enough for a first down. But again, that clock ticking like, again, water torture. And that would bring it more representative scoring to what the actual fact of this game was, a close, tightly knit affair. I'm just glad your camera that's sitting in front of me or there didn't blow away tonight. Or your paper. Oh, I... I was ready with extra scotch tape. Yeah. Oh, he's scrambling beautifully. He got around two or three. Now he'll go in for the touchdown. The second rushing touchdown of the game for Balacorta. Bakewell got two. Balacorta gets two. And you hear the fans emote, and that's good. Well, now remember when it was 16 to 12 and all that? Now it's more like an eight-man football game. 45-33, 78 points tonight. 
Like I said, if they only paid me for the words. Wow. I've got a, a word limit. Yeah, and that's what they said the eight-man game is all about. I had never done an eight-man game in all my career. and uh, But the coach of Desert Christian, Aaron Williams, was adamant in saying, do not compare it with arena football, you know. Yeah, but with the tighter field, it makes you think it's going to be less scoring. That's not true. We ran on an 80-yard field tonight and tighter in terms of width. Now they're going for the two-pointer. They'd like to get it up to 35. And he does go in for the score. That was number three again, Francisco Balacorta. And he somehow found the magic at the end of the game. But the old-fashioned axiom, too little, too late. More than a miracle, right? Hey, Desert Christian, they were founded as First Baptist Church in Lancaster. They started a school in 77 and the high school in 88. So they live with the, with the old saying, expect a miracle. 37.9 seconds ago, it would be the most remarkable feat in high school history. But let's see, 11 points, a score, a two-point conversion, and a field goal. Oh, would it? Six, eight, three, that would tie it. Yeah, your onside's coming right now. And they said one thing about eight-man football, you see a lot of them, but this will be the first onside of the evening. Here we go. A little dribbler. He goes out of bounds. Flag. That means it's going to be spotted there. Or will they do it one more time? It doesn't make any sense to do anything foolish and just put the knee down, and there you have it. Oh, boy, yeah. Jello's a jingling. I know where I'll be tonight. Hot coffee at Denny's. Uh-oh, there's the plug for Denny's. Oops. I, didn't, I looked right at Annabelle. She's my boss. So if I get a raised eyebrow or pursed lips or that look that mother used to give me when I reach for the cookies... Okay, if they want a plug, call Annabelle. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's running. So for Desert Christian, a heroic effort, a courageous effort, but they didn't finish. Milken with the long bus ride, and the bus is warming up to take them. They're going to have an enjoyable ride back to L.A. tonight. Coming up with a 45-35 win, a score, again, not indicative of the very close game it was, a game that featured seven, count them, seven lead changes. A program note, as we see it at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that's it. 45-35, Milken gets a win over Desert Christian. A program note, as I noted, we'll be back on a week from tomorrow. It's going to be exciting. I believe that's the 29th. September 29th, and it'll be back here at Lancaster on the homecoming. Lancaster High versus Little Rock. And boy, we're going to feature a potpourri, a plethora of production excitement because it's almost like we're going to have the L28 production truck out, even though they don't have one. But it'll be just like it. Graphics. Are we going to have slow-mo? Oh. You've always got me on play-by-play -play to do slow-mo verbally. Anyway, that'll be it for tonight. So glad you were with us. Outstanding game. And thank you again to the great staff at Desert Christian. And, of course, their talented athletic director, Mrs. Edwards. She was great at the half. Really enjoyed it. Again, 
Milken from L.A. Beats Desert Christian 45-35. Desert Christian falls to 1-3 and three overall, 0-1 oh in league. Milken improves to 2-3 and three and 1-2 and two in league with their first Heritage League victory. For all of us, Annabelle and the crack staff here at L28, I'm Ronnie Wald. Until a week from tomorrow, so long for now. Hoorah.